It is Calhoun County Football Media Day here from the Aniston Country Club. It's time to talk a little Oxford Yellow Jackets with head coach Sam Adams. Coach, how are you doing? Doing great. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. How's, how's the summer been for the Yellow Jackets? It's been good. You know, we've been in uh, most of the 7-on-7 seven -seven kind of mode for, for the greatest part of the summer. Um, you know, we ended up with uh, we won a tournament at Gadsden City. We were the runner-up with the one at Hoover. We were in the semis with the one at UAB. So we had some good production. I think we ended up 18-4. and four throughout the course of the summer in all those games. And, you know, that's it's good competition, it's yeah. good work. It's not the same as real football. We, we're yeah. fully aware of that. Uh, but, you know, as far as what we've put in front of them so far, we've, we've done a really good job. Yeah, what, what do you look to gain from from the uh, from seven on sevens? Well, you got to see who's willing to compete when they're put in tough situations, you know, because it's really an offensive game. You know, there's no defensive pass yeah. rush. The four-second clock, which is what most of the tournaments are, that is an extremely long time. You don't always get – four seconds in real 11 on 11 football so the defense is put in bad situations over and over and over again yeah. and uh, I think we saw our guys consistently respond well when they were put in adverse situations our yeah. defense really gave us put us in good positions to win in pretty much every game that we played um, and that's a you know when those days get long too you see who's yeah. willing to gut it out by the end you know, a lot of times you're playing uh, you know maybe six seven eight games in a day and that's a lot of work for anybody. Yeah. You know, they're only 20, 20, 20, 21 minute games, but when you get past about game four, that's when those legs start to get a little bit tired. Yeah. And you know, you see who's really, really willing to dig down and keep going when they don't feel well. Just as you've watched your guys in those competitions through summer workouts, what do you like about this group you got this year? Well, I think this group is really, uh, they're, they're excited when other guys on the team have success. Um, that that doesn't sound like a very big thing, but, yeah. it's, but it's huge, really. You know, the, this group right here, they've kind of been through, uh, you know, some interesting stuff in their in their three years leading up to this as seniors, and uh, they've kind of seen it all. And you know, I think now they understand the most important thing on a Friday night is the score that's on the scoreboard at the end, regardless of yeah. what it looks like, who's putting the points up there, and all that. You know, they they just willing to do whatever it takes to, to win the game and we have a lot of guys that, that they spend a lot of time together outside of football which is extremely important as far as building the dynamics of the team yeah and uh, who are some guys on the team that you're looking forward uh, this year to uh, to step up and lead this team well the the two guys that were here with me today Judd Sire who will be a three-year starter at, at receiver will also play defensive back Jaden Thomas was here with me he'll be our, his third year to start for us at running back um, we got Keenan Britt, this will be his third year start for us on the defensive line. There's a recurring theme here of a lot yeah. of third year starter kind of guys. Caleb Tenner uh, will be somebody in that category on the defensive line as well. Hudson Gilman will be a, a guy that has started some over the, his three seasons. Um, we've got 15 total returning starters. Okay. So there'll be a lot of uh, a lot more experience out there. We're, I still wouldn't say that we're a senior heavy team. We've got. 19 seniors, which is a good number. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I'd like for that number to be up a little bit, a little bit higher. Yeah. Um, but you know, I think we'll the experience that our guys have had in the previous years uh, hopefully will pay off for us in these weeks to come. Yeah, absolutely. Your quarterback Mason Mims. What have you seen from him yeah. this, this uh, summer? Getting ready for this season. He's had a phenomenal off season from a physical standpoint. He's uh, about 20 pounds heavier than he was last year in a good way. Uh, strength the shot through the roof. His velocity on his throws has increased greatly. Uh, just that's just going along with the physical strength gains. You know, naturally you're going to be able to throw the ball a little harder. Yeah. Um, he's continued to get better and better on just going through the progressions and understanding where the balls where the ball should go. And, and I think that's really his biggest strong point is just yeah. being able to distribute the ball to the to the the place and the guy who it's supposed to go to. Yeah. And to not get caught with the ball in his hands very often. Yeah. And uh, he's. He's really a student of the game and is a fast learner. And uh, I mean, he's you know he's got a really good, really good shot to be one of the top quarterbacks anywhere by yeah. the time all this is over. You mentioned uh, kind of the guys that have have been starters still with your program. Do you yep. see like uh, them using you know their experience, especially last season, using yeah. kind of last season's motivation to, to help the team get better for this year? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you see them talking to the younger guys a lot. Uh, correcting the younger guys when, when need be, and it's not always about football stuff, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's when your players can really be the leaders of the team and be an extension of the coaches, that's when you really have something special. You know, coach-led teams are, are fine, and coaches have to be leaders, 
but it, it can't always just come from the coaches. Yeah. And so I think we're seeing now our our especially our seniors starting to take a lot of ownership in the program all, overall. Yeah, and I know for folks who drive by Oxford High School, they see the construction going on. What's the, yeah. what's the latest with the new facility? So we're getting close. Uh, I don't have a date for you, but. <laughs> Uh, we're a matter of you know a couple of weeks away now, hopefully, fingers crossed. Yeah. From being inside that building and really being in the best facility in the state, you know, and it's that's been a big challenge for us over the last couple of years. We've had you know our locker rooms under the stadium, our weight rooms on the far other side of campus. So for us to break apart and do position meetings, we have some groups that are you know finding a corner of the equipment room or yeah. a hallway or whatever. Now we're about to move into a place that's really unmatched with any high school that I've ever seen. Uh, and it just really says a lot about the city of Oxford and Oxford City Schools that they're willing to invest in our student athletes in, in all sports. That's, yeah. It's not just the football facility. Obviously, we're housed inside of it, but uh, really all sports will be able to use that on a, on a daily basis. Looking at your region for this year, tough region there in Class 6A. Mm -hmm. um, kind of how do you see that shaking out, your thoughts on, on your region? Yeah, well, I mean, until somebody shows it different, I mean, it's clay and everybody's kind of chasing clay. Yeah. You know, they've been the kings of this kind of area for, for a lot of the last maybe 10, 8 to 10 years or so, you know. But you also have other state champions that have come out of this part of the state, too. With You know, Oxford has had a state championship in, in the last few years, and Pinson's had two um, in the last few years. So uh, it, it's definitely a talent-wealthy region, for sure. Um, and then you have, you know, like Centerpoint. Last year was a super strong team. I think they exceeded, I don't know if they exceeded their own expectations, but I would say they exceeded the expectations that most team, most schools around the state had of them. Um, so I know they'll be tough again. And, you know, Pell City's an up and coming program. And then you got Shades Valley and Huffman. Yeah. And, you know, there's not really a, a lot, many weeks in there where you can say, well, we could kind of take a, take a breath a little bit this week and yeah. relax a little bit. That's just not the case at all. Um, but, you know, that, that does nothing but put you in a better spot once you get in the playoffs, yeah, because uh, you've seen every kind of athlete that you could possibly see anywhere by the time you hit round one. Absolutely. Well, Coach, looking forward to some Oxford football. Thanks so much yep. uh, for spending some time with us here. Yep, thank you very much. Go Big O. We'll have more here from Calhoun County Football Media Day from the Aniston Country Club.